I would highly recommend if you catch yourself being like frustrated or feeling like you're stuck, really reflect on enjoying the process. Unless your life literally depends on how you play, there's no reason to put that degree of stress on yourself. To people like us, where we don't have our literal lives staked on this, it's important that we do it healthily. And ironically, being able to put away that intensity will sup for whatever reason, bring the results that we really great. Bjorn, what's your approach to improvement in fighting games? Ooh, that's a big question. Um, my approach is to separate the emotional component and Round separate four. the whole, like, uh, fight. de-link, like, how important results are. Those two were the best for my improvement. And I learned that from League of Legends, not from... not from Tekken. That was a dope answer. Thanks. Yeah, no, I mean, I used to get so fucking pissed all the time. How'd you get your emotions out of the game? Um, it took a lot of effort for me. I used to be pissed for a really long time. Like, I played League, and I was stuck platinum for four years because I really wanted to rank up. Yeah, I used to get so pissed because I was like, I'm not where I want to be, and like, I'm not working hard enough. All these things that really didn't matter because like that energy you put into that, the energy you put into that, is taking away from energy that could be put into actually like improving your play. Like there's nothing about the rank in the top left next to your name that does anything to make your whiff punishment better. Does anything to make your... Uh, holy shit, that actually carried. Does nothing to make your like spacing better. Does nothing to make your like observation... You know what I mean? Like there are so many things you need to do to get better. And any little energy that goes outside of that is like wasted effort. So League has that extra component of like, there are things you can't control and learning to deal with that feels like shit, but like, uh, I feel like that is the best carryover to life. There's so much fucked up shit that happens that you really can't control at all. <laughs> so that's why people like, people get so mad at Tekken Online. I'm like, you guys have never been in a situation where four people, you have four people that all get along and then one person just decides to suck penis for a living. Round one. And then you all have the taste of cock in your mouth for the rest of your days. You know, it feels awful. I try to play for improving, and then I get tilted if I don't see myself doing better in subsequent sense, falling back to the same habits, and then I fear that I don't understand the things I actually need to work on. But yes! So I feel like you're already, you're in the, in, you, you got a hunch, right? Booty, you can play after 11th Prince. I try to play, so it's like, um, I actually talk about this in the video I was on with Alex Nostalgics, Don't Give Up on Fighting Games. Basically, it's like, so many people, so, on one end of the spectrum, why is my webcam so fucked up? On one end of the spectrum, you have like scrub quoters, right? So like people here are like, oh, it's all the game's fault. My team sucks. You know, you, you, all day, like that shit, you know? That shit all day. And, um, sorry, one sec. Okay, so like on one end of the spectrum, you have like the scrub quotes people who are like, nothing's my fault, my team sucks, the game is rigged, Devil Jin's a bad character, you know, all those people. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, you have people who recognize like they want to improve, like, okay, it's on me, but they are so hard on themselves, oh, gosh. either unfairly, I'm for one, nervous. Or their analysis is all results based. So you're gonna have people who are all like, oh, I'm not improving because I lost. Like, that's not necessarily true. You know? Like, you wouldn't, like, if, if fucking. What's a good example? Stock market is a fucked up example to make these days because of all the, like, crazy uh, retail investing stuff. But, like, you wouldn't say like Apple's doing bad if over a month they were improving and then like one day their stock goes down. Nobody's like, dude, Apple fell off. Apple's trash. Company's doomed. You would never say that about that company. And if you, well, if you, if you did, you would have the same problem that the, not the scrub coders, but the other side, right? So it's the, the focus on results as your metric that ends up being a big pitfall. So my example in my own life is, um, seasons five to eight of League, I was like platinum and I played so many fucking games. Hey, can we stop cornering me, please? Nice duck, dude. Holy shit. 
I was um round three. Fight. See, big head man, that works if you already have like the chill mindset. But like telling somebody who's like really frustrated at like results and shit, that doesn't fix it. Because they're still thinking like something's wrong with them or some shit, you know? So the trick is like you can't make results the focus of what your object of improvement is. Like it's really hard. The pro players, the pro players who can do that are like literally constructed differently. But it's so hard for the brain to operate in a state of like mental or emotional arousal and still be cognitively active. And to make improvements, you're literally pushing against what your brain likes to automatically do. And the only way to push against instinct is to leverage like the cognitive part over and over again consistently. So whenever the emotional lizard brain takes over, you lose the ability to like make good well, you don't lose the ability, but it becomes harder and harder to leverage that cognitive part that you need, right? So, please don't go low. <laughs> so, final round. In that sense, it's like, the, so the so that's kind of all like nice and theoretical, right? How do you actually like implement that? You just you really have to find metrics for improvement and constantly tell yourself and your brain that there are more important things than the win or the loss. For example, at EVO, there was a time where for the EVO match, I would have been so pissed that I didn't make top 8. But really, legitimately, what I was happy with that day... Can I go into sneak? How do I go into sneak? What? That was a hiccup turn. Uh, what I distinctly remembered was like, okay, there were so many tournaments in the past where I've been playing and I've just gotten so upset that it would take me out of the cognitive realm. Like, I would just be like, God, I made this mistake. Like, I've been practicing nonstop that I should not be doing down forward 4-2 after rage drive. You can learn something from losing, but if your attention is all on the outcome of the game, then you will miss it. And it takes, that's like a great destination point, but it's hard to arrive at that point if all you see is your ranked points going up and down, right? So, for example, I'll, on Shaheen, I'll lose to people in like blue rings. And it would be very, it'd be very tempting to think, wow, I wouldn't lose to these people if I were on Noctis, you know? And sometimes I do think that. I'm like, wow, I can't even win with Devil Jin. I'm hella carried by Noctis, you know? If I can't even win with Devil Jin, maybe everybody's right. Maybe I can only be carried by Noctis and I can't win on anybody else. Right? So, I still am very weak to that to this day. And it really takes constant reminders to myself that there are other things to focus on and to care about. Placeholder sucks. Thanks so much for the sub. People love to shit on people and downplay the other people to upplay themselves. I feel like there's there's all kinds. There are people who call everybody shit and legitimately have no ego. They just legitimately want to see everybody do better. There are people who just repeat that shit and just echo it to sound cool. I'm guilty of that. I would say everybody's shit and I didn't even know why. I just said it because like I saw good players say it. And I'm like, oh yeah. So like I'll be w if I can say that I'll be woke enough to apply it and get better. You know? Damn, it didn't work. Wow! That's a really generous attitude, Actius. I respect it. I think it's much healthier than the way I think about the game. <laughs> But I think, yeah. Acvius, are you the gym coach? Anyways, um... Bjorn, I, I think you asked that initially, right? Hopefully that helps a little bit. If you still have more questions, let me know. But that's a really... I'm really passionate about that topic because, like... Oh, yeah. So, my story. Um, 
In season four, I was silver. And then season five, six, seven, eight, I was hard stuck platinum. Maybe it was three years. I don't remember. It was a lot of time. And it was like, all I cared about was getting better at the time. I literally probably spent like 12 hours a day focusing on League of Legends stuff. Like I would get through my college work like as quickly as possible so I could like watch Challenger VODs, like study Korean VODs, get coaching. I did like literally everything. Because for me, not getting into Ivy League colleges was like the big thing I was dealing with at the time. So trying to compensate for that by hitting high elo in a game was what I wanted. So, um, while I was in that zone of the heavy mental load and stuff, it just, it just wouldn't come together. I was constantly, I would miss, there was a time where I missed one CS in the lane. I missed one CS in the lane and I literally like slammed my mouth because I thought to myself, if I can't get this one CS, how am I going to hit diamond? Stuff like that. And none of that, none of that affects anything to do with how you get better. Like at a certain point, it's just pointless, right? So hopefully that helps. And as soon as I was, it, and I say as soon as, it took an extended amount of time to like calm that down and like literally daily I'd have to go into games in ranked and say all I care about today is getting one good trade against my opponent all I care about today is not overextending and killing myself you know just like I picked one goal and I did that over an extended period and I dropped so much rank and whatever but as soon as I was able to let that sink in over many many weeks months of just repeating that to myself and literally taking the time to what feels like reprogram just like what my instinct was, which was to get upset over a result. Um, the, se the next season came and I hit Diamond 3 in like 30 games. It was something disgusting like that. Like it was really fast. And it was alarming how fast I got the results I craved when I let go of it. You know how people say like, you know all those corny things like if you love someone, let it go or let them go. Or like if you, the Bible says shit like the first will be last or whatever. It's really ironic the human condition of when you don't give so many fucks about something to the point where it hinders you, you will often get to where you wanted to go. Round two. And I, back, at, back when I was struggling, I would have never believed that. You could not pay me to believe that. And now having gone through that experience and multiple experiences improving in different games, even in this game, I would get so upset at shitty tournament placements and uh, and like my viewership going down and stuff like that. And I just did so much better when I didn't care. There were so many tournaments after, like I took, a, I took like three days to be like, you know what? I'm here because I wanted to quit my job because I wanted to enjoy the process of my day to day. And I lost sight of that. So once I reminded myself I wanted to enjoy the process, I went into the next tournament and got like second in ICFC. And it had been ages since something like that happened. So even though I'm saying all this shit, like I'm 100% confident in it, I forget about that shit all the time. So I would highly recommend if you catch yourself being like frustrated or feeling like you're stuck, Really reflect on A, enjoying the process. Unless your life literally depends on how you play, there's no reason to put that degree of stress in yourself. Pro players are in a different realm. They have a career built on this, everything else. That is different. I think the advice to them should be different. But to people like us, where we don't have our literal lives staked on this, it's important that we do it healthily. And ironically, being able to put away that intensity will sump for whatever reason bring the results that we really crave. Yeah, John Ding's a great example. I didn't know he didn't study frames, but I know that people would lose, or he would, um, Big Head Man told me, John Ding would lose, and he would just be like, all right, shit, well, what am I gonna eat today? You know, like, he literally has the most chill attitude towards the game. And look at how far you can take him. Now, obviously, there are exceptions, and, like, not everybody can get away with that, like, but that is... To me, that should be admired just as much as the guy, the Bin Chang who spends 10 hours daily in the arcades grinding, you know? Like, both of those are really respectable. Anyways, I ignored a lot of things there because I was giving a speech and I want to put this on YouTube. But, uh, 
Hopefully that helps, Bjorn. Uh... Anyways, I missed a lot of things. I'm gonna scroll up and read all the chat, unless you wanna just retype it or whatever. Nice combo. 